it's about developing true audio and being in control. And um, we are extremely happy um, to have gathered a team that has that mentality in their DNA. It has a scope larger than any project we ever did before. Our small team has built something that normally is only built by real large hi-fi companies. And often even these large companies just buy an off-the-shelf solution. So why did we go there? <laughs> well, I had a dream. <laughs> Grim Audio's mission is to set new audio frontiers by making the music chain more transparent. To reach that goal, we need to explore new territory, and for that we need full freedom to go wherever we want. And that freedom comes at a price. The Mew One music player is a hub between you and the digital music world, online and local. And we like that hub to be transparent to the music. To achieve that, it first of all has to be very accurate in clock stability. We know that for a long time, and we are specialists in low jitter clocks. But we learned that this hub also has to be more accurate than we could ever imagine when it comes to digital processing, like converting one audio format to another. So we decided to develop our own FPGA processing platform of extremely high precision and combine this with a very stable, stable Linux PC. This is also design. And this brings me to the second reason to build the new one. Uh, media players often make me feel nervous. They sound different depending on the processor load and stuff like that. I don't want that. I want a music player to be stable and reliable. And to rest assured that it runs smoothly. And if we put so much effort in a device, it better be attractive too. <laughs> so for the user interface, we selected room maps. They allowed us to run both Room Core Server and Room Endpoint in one box, which makes it very convenient for the user. And of course, the box had to be beautiful. <laughs> for this, we hired the talented industrial designer Michiel Eilings, who amazed us with the design of this extremely beautiful new one. Now, to envision a device that is attractive, reliable, and precise, that is one. But to build it is a much more complex thing. My name is Justin Viss. Um, I've been working for uh, Grimaudio for a while. And the last two and a half years I've been uh, working on, the, on this project, the media player, since the beginning. Um, as Ilko said, uh, we want to be in control of the, the audio. We want every bit of the, the audio file to be played back perfectly to the speakers. To do this, we currently 
use uh, discrete systems. Uh, we built them ourselves. And it's also very hard to do this uh, in an analog domain. So we had to go to the digital domain and use the, the processing from uh, uh, our friends, uh, Gertjan and Peter, as, as Ilko has explained. This uh, technology we had to develop uh, is built into an FPGA. Uh, an FPGA is uh, a controller, but you can control it yourself. Every bit of this controller you can set, you can have this control. A good architecture should simplify things. Defining it is a quest for finding similarities in the many parts of the system and unifying them into similar structures and solutions. In essence, doing software architecture entails creating harmony. This not only makes the system more easy to understand and therefore easier to build, but also enables us to use it for multiple purposes. The new one that we show today to you is only the first in the line of products for high-end and professional audio products that are going to be based on this new platform. And where did this quest for harmony lead us? What is the end result? The shortest possible answer I can give to the question is 12. Um, I am 71 years old now and trying to be retired. <laughs> My influence on the Amphil one and new one is in the background. I think I have never even touched until now. You should, could say, however, that my uh, spirit hovers over the MU1 and through the MU1, as in fact with all Grim uh, Audio products. I'm specifically concerned with super silent power supply circuits wherever they are needed. I designed a very simple but um, effective shunt power supply about 15 years ago and we'll still use it. Um, <clears throat> these power supplies are really silent, about 300 nanovolt per, uh, in, the, in the audio band. And I am the jitter guardian. If there is a jitter problem, it's my call. <laughs> <laughs> my other support is that I stop by from time to time and ask nasty questions. <laughs> <laughs> of course, these are just a few aspects. Over the years, we have learned that everything, literally everything, matters if you want top quality audio, down to the choice of even one single resistor or one tiny capacitor. If you work hard, pay attention to every detail, and have a little luck, you end up with a smile on your face and on the face of your customers. Taking it too easy will damage the musicality of the equipment, I think. Firing up your first electronic circuits is a major excitement. Will it explode or not? <laughs> will smoke escape or will it stay in? Um, after a while and a lot of suffering, which is part of the passion, um, you start to build circuits which are uh, a bit more predictable. <laughs> so they stay cool when you switch them on and they even work. Um, moreover, the next day they work as well. <laughs> um, and it's kind of cool. It's also part of that excitement. Developing clock circuits with jitter down to tens of femtoseconds means that you have to know what you're doing. And um, Peter talked about it, um, applying shunt regulators that have power supply re uh, rejections up to 140 dB is a real challenge. Um, yes, that's 10 million. Um, having that control is essential to get performance of electronic circuits that you really want. 
primordial products are designed by talented engineers that have that mindset to control what they do and they don't let go. The mu one is the ultimate outcome of this mindset. Is there one more question? How could you summarize the differences between the Mu1 and, well, the rest of the market? Because essentially it's a computer that processes data and is based on room software. Yes, so. um, that's a good question. Um, well, like I, I tried to explain, it is, um, it's about three things. Um, and, and then the most important one, audio-wise, is the precision with which we treat the data. It is a digital output only device, the MU1. Yeah. Later on, the DAX, etc., will be added, but the MU1 is digital output only on ASEBU. But um, to stream or to, to, to be able to stream the audio through that ASEBU output, um, if it's a, a higher res uh, original, or even if it's a lower res original, then your DAC can, can, can deal with. Uh, we can use the FPGA to either downsample or upsample that data. Mm -hmm. And if, since we are able to do that at an extremely high precision, your whole system will, uh, will, will gain in quality. Um, because it's, um, it's usually, uh, you, what, what we um, experience in practice is that many converters work better if they run at a higher sample rate, not always, but okay. they can. But to get to that higher sample rate, um, uh, you need that high precision. So if you have, for instance, a 44.1 original and you upsample it to 176, um, and you do that at an extremely high precision, your 44.1 file will sound better on the same DAC than if you, if you just feed it with the original 44.1. Is it just a matter of trying or...? Um, well, I guess so, because okay. we are not in control of the other people's uh, equipment. And this is also what we experienced with uh, the clocks, for instance. Uh, the CC1 and CC2 clock have a super low jitter performance. I mean, uh, we really do analyze that. Yeah. And then still we experience sometimes that some equipment that you connect to our clock performs worse in slave mode than in master yeah. mode. Yeah. And that's a matter of some technical issues within, inside of that device that we have no control on. Over and then that device should, of course, preferably be used in master mode. But that's really dependent on on, on the equipment of other vendors' equipment. So that indeed, your, the answer to your question is yes. Try. All right. <laughs> there will be an option in the settings of the new one whether you want to upsample or not, etc.